We know that when we head to the theater to see the latest Marvel movie, we're gonna have to suspend our disbelief just a little bit. But one of the problems with creating such a realistic world like the MCU is that we can't stop thinking about practical problems. Of course, we're glad the decimation was reversed, but there are a ton of ramifications of this, and some of them are pretty shocking to think about. Let's start out with an obvious question, and one of which has been plaguing viewers since Avengers Infinity War. Why the decimation? According to Gamora, Thanos has spent his entire life trying to wipe out half of all life in the universe. Sure, he says he's doing it for the greater good, which has never been used as a justification for doing something completely heinous, but couldn't he have just easily wished for twice as many resources? In the comic books, Thanos decimates the universe for the oldest reason in the book, to impress a chick. And by chick, we mean the personification of death. So, although it's not really a better reason in morale terms, it at least makes a little bit more sense. Even the Russo brothers admit Thanos could have just doubled the resources instead of wiping out half of all life. This watering down of the Mad Titan is what makes him less of a legendary villain than he could have been in the MCU. Now that we've mentioned that Thanos' plan was bad from the beginning, let's talk about why it's bad specifically. It seemed like the decimation just wiped out half of all life completely indiscriminately. So, for instance, half of all humans were eliminated, and so were half of all pigeons. As we know, the world isn't short on either humans or pigeons, so while tragic, the surviving humans and pigeons would all keep living and multiplying. But what about animals who are endangered? There are so many species on the precipice of extinction, and Thanos just pushed them over like he pushed Gamora off a cliff in Vormir. Uh, sorry, too soon? Even after reversing the decimation, those animals who perished as a result of their numbers being cut in half are gone for good, which means we'd be losing endangered species twice. So Thanos has been planning on causing the decimation for quite some time, and it's always been his goal to collect the Infinity Stones and wipe out half of all life in one fell swoop. So then why has he been manually killing half of all people all this time? He did this to Gamora's people and later tells her that her people are now flourishing due to bountiful resources. But what about after the decimation? Did they lose a further half of their population, taking them down to a quarter of their original number? Same with the Asgardians who Thanos confronted in outer space. Did even more of them die after the decimation, or did they just get a pass? What was the point of doing a DIY if they were going to get decimated anyway? And when the snap was undone, all of those who were decimated came back, but not those who died outside of it. So are the numbers of the Asgardians permanently halved? Let's talk about everyone suddenly being popped back into existence. In Avengers Endgame, Peter Parker tells Tony Stark that he simply woke up on Titan along with Doctor Strange and no memory of the past five years, so we can safely assume that everyone came back to life in the same spot they were in when they were dusted. But what about the people who weren't on solid ground? What about the people who were, say, on airplanes? Were people who were out on boats unceremoniously dropped into the ocean? Or was there an area of effect clause where people got safely put on the nearest landmass? Sadly, Will Delta will ever get answers to any of these important questions. Even the people who managed to return to solid ground are now faced with a serious problem. Where are they going to live? They haven't paid their rent or mortgage for the last five years, so they're not going to have a place to go back to. Sure, there are people who have friends and family they can crash with, but there are many more who don't. Imagine suddenly losing five years of your life and realizing your home is gone and you have nowhere to stay. This aspect of the decimation might be addressed at some point in Spider-Man Far From Home based on the first movie trailer. We saw Happy Hogan waving around an oversized novelty check for $500,000 dedicated to helping the homeless. Could this be specifically for those who lost their homes because of the decimation and its reversal? It's great so many people came back, but now the problem is what to do with them all. And another huge question is, how are we going to take care of them? When the decimation happened, we have to imagine production came to a grinding halt, and when it started back up again, it was to take care of a population that was half of what it once was. So all of a sudden, you have an utterly massive influx of people, and what are you supposed to feed them? How fast can production ramp up in order to get people fed and keep them that way? Even in an ideal situation where all the decimated immediately return to work, ready and raring to go, it'd still take quite some time. How many people would go without basic food, medicine, or other resources during that time? In Avengers Endgame, we even saw that heroes like Steve Rogers were having trouble coping with what happened. If losing five years doesn't earn you some vacation time, eh, we don't know what does. And let's talk about the social aspect of half of the population being gone for five years and then suddenly returning. How many people lost their romantic partners during the decimation? 
We saw Joe Russo portraying a character in Steve Rogers' support group who was trying to move on after losing his partner in the decimation. How many people managed to get into new relationships after their loved one perished? How many new marriages took place and how many new children were born as a result? Five years is a long time, and let's not forget marriage vows are only good until death do us part or death do us dusted. They don't really include a clause for people returning from the dead. Not only would people be revived into a world where their homes might be gone, and there's not enough food, but their loved ones could have moved on as well, or worse, they could have gotten a bad haircut and started a career as a bloodthirsty vigilante. So clearly there are a ton of practical problems with the decimation happening and then being reversed. But hey, at least we never have to worry about something like that happening again. In Avengers Endgame, we learned that Thanos had used the Infinity Stones one final time to destroy them. Considering that the stones have been established to be at least somewhat sentient, it's kind of crazy he was able to do this at all, but uh, okay. So Thanos destroys the Infinity Stones, and Steve Rogers takes the non-destroyed stones back to various points in time so that Thanos can collect and destroy them. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Except for the fact that the Infinity Stones still exist. Yeah, we were surprised too. According to the Russo brothers, Thanos only reduced the stones to an atomic level. The stones are still present in the universe. Great, we're sure that'll never come back to haunt our heroes. Although the ending of Avengers Infinity War was definitely sad and emotional, there was something that held back our cascade of tears. We were confident that the decimation would be reversed for a number of reasons. The first of which is that we don't get the feeling Disney is tired of making money just quite yet. It all got undone in the comic books, so we were sure it'd be undone in the MCU. The bigger question was what would happen to characters like Heimdall, Loki, Gamora, and Vision, who didn't die in the decimation? Were they really gone for good? Well, the short answer to that is apparently yes. At the end of Avengers Endgame, Heimdall and Vision are still definitely gone, along with the modern-day Gamora. As for Loki, well, that's a whole can of worms for another day. But the point is, is that our universe is down quite a few heroes at a time when they're desperately needed. There are undoubtedly tons of villains out there who are going to see the chaos as an opportunity to take advantage of others. Some fans even theorize that's what's going on in Spider-Man Far From Home. Did Quentin Beck really come from another universe in order to help out, or is this some sort of evil plan Mysterio is working on? Maybe he presents himself as a good guy and then does the old switcheroo. From Mysterio, that wouldn't be too surprising, but then again, Marvel Studios did make the Skrulls good guys, so who knows? In the trailer for Spider-Man Far From Home, we learn that some of our favorite superheroes are missing in action on planet Earth. Even those who survive, like Thor and Captain Marvel, aren't necessarily on call which requires the remaining heroes to step up, and that's just on Earth. As Captain Marvel has pointed out on numerous times, the universe is a big place. We learn that Thanos wiped out the Nova Corps, which was a force dedicated to stopping crimes, and because they were killed by Thanos directly, instead of in the decimation, they're gone for good. Now that the population is booming, crime will undoubtedly be thriving, and the Nova Corps is gone. No wonder Captain Marvel doesn't have time to come running back to Earth so Peter Parker can go on vacation. Sorry, Spidey, we need all hands on deck, bud. Of course, there are going to be plenty of run-of-the-mill criminals to contend with. Arms dealers, thieves, scam artists. But let's take a moment to talk about the massive cosmic shift which took place due to the decimation and its reversal. What about massive threats like Galactus? How will these things have affected him and how could this cause him to set his sights on Earth? Or what about Dormammu, who we were introduced to in the movie Doctor Strange? The Time Stone and the threat of having to spend forever with Doctor Strange was enough to convince him to leave Earth alone. But with the Time Stone gone, what's stopping him from coming back? A sequel to Doctor Strange has finally been announced, so hopefully, that's a question we'll get an answer to. Still, Strange lost the most powerful tool in his arsenal, so his position is more precarious than ever before. Thankfully, he has plenty of other powers and magical items to call upon. And speaking of characters who are absurdly powerful, there are plenty of them in the MCU that we've already seen. Did the decimation affect people like the Collector or the Grandmaster? These beings have been around since the creation of the universe and are pretty much immortal. What would be the ramifications if one or more of them disappeared in the decimation? And then what would happen if they were to suddenly reappear? Although we haven't seen Galactus in the MCU yet, we know Disney recently acquired the rights to his character as part of the Fantastic Four bundle they got from Fox. What would happen if Galactus simply disappeared? When he returns, would he be twice as eager to devour planets? Or if he remained, would he simply be going around completely unchecked? The Russo brothers gave future Marvel movie directors an out by saying that the Infinity Stones still exist in some way. However, for all intents and purposes, they're pretty much gone and we don't expect to see them again anytime soon. 
The Infinity Saga is over, and we assume Marvel's gonna move on to other things. But even without the Time Stone in existence, time travel is now a thing. Yes, it's extremely complex and requires PIM particles and tons of expensive equipment, but we know now it can be done. The problem with introducing something so powerful is that it could fall into the wrong hands. A villain may be inspired to create their own time machine after learning what our heroes did in Avengers Endgame, or someone we consider a hero could result in misusing time, either for their own selfish reasons or in an effort to save the day. Steve Rogers is supposed to be the best of us, and even he couldn't resist the temptation to misuse time travel. So what can we expect from the average MCU citizen? Speaking of the limitations of our superheroes, let's talk about mortality for a moment. Sometimes what's right and what's wrong is pretty clear-cut. People selling vibranium weapons to dangerous criminals falls neatly in the bad category. But then you have things like the events of Captain America's Civil War, where even our heroes couldn't agree on what's right or not. Could our heroes really have brought back everyone, and not just those who perished in the decimation? Bruce Banner said he tried and failed to bring Natasha back, but some statements made by Tony Stark made it seem like it would have been possible. The thing is, it would have meant erasing his daughter from existence, and he clearly wasn't willing to do that. We don't blame him, he's only human. But it does raise an interesting moral question. How heroic is it to leave so many people behind in order to save one life? We thought heroes didn't trade lives. In Avengers Endgame, we learn that Bruce Banner and the Incredible Hulk had put their differences aside and merged into one being. This came not a moment too soon because he was the only character who could wield the Infinity Gauntlet and survive. We saw him reverse the decimation, but not without being injured. When Thanos caused the decimation, it wounded him, and he's being established to be stronger than the Hulk. Destroying the Infinity Stones almost cost Thanos his life. We see that Bruce Banner's hand is now severely injured as a result of reversing the decimation, but we're not sure what the extent of the damage is. Do we have another hero injured or seriously out of commission? Does this new fused character heal as quickly as the Hulk, or will Bruce being present slow him down? Will he be totally fine, making him injured in the first place totally pointless? Okay, so we get that this part of the movie was intentionally left vague, but we still have a lot of questions. Although Okoye was checking in with Black Widow, we really don't know what went on in Wakanda following the decimation. Did someone step up and take over with T'Challa gone? In the comic books, we've seen Shuri take over, but she got dusted along with her brother. Did the council simply rule for five years, or did someone else take over? What happened with the Wakandan Outreach Center T'Challa created following the first Black Panther movie? Thankfully, we know we're getting a Black Panther 2, so presumably, we'll eventually get some answers to these questions. But Wakanda just went public prior to the decimation, and that was already a pretty precarious move. Things could have easily gone bad in this normally peaceful nation. Even back when we only had the Avengers Endgame trailers to show us what the MCU was like following the decimation, things certainly looked quite grim. Things got bad after half the population was wiped out in a moment, and even our heroes struggled to adjust. But the world changed greatly in order to adapt to everyone being gone. Socially, economically, governmentally, things have been shaken up to say the least. And while the decimation was reversed, it isn't going to undo all of those changes. The world just can't go back to the way things were pre-snap. Instead, it's going to keep evolving to deal with these changes. All of those people who are dusted on our back and are going to be looking at government officials they've never heard of, who are in some pretty important positions. Let's take a moment to talk about poor Peter Parker, who got dusted and lost his mentor slash father figure, Tony Stark. He's back now, and it appears as though his pal Ned and his romantic interest MJ also got dusted and then returned. But what about everyone else in his class? What about everyone else in all classes for that matter? Do they just keep going to school like nothing happened? Half of their classmates are now five years older than they once were, and when you're a teenager, five years is a heck of a long time. The age difference between 16 and 21 years is quite significant. Maybe in the grand scheme of things, this isn't an enormous deal, but popping back into existence and learning that half your friends are now adults has to be incredibly jarring. And let's talk about the cultural impact of losing five years of time. Just think about all the Super Bowls everyone missed out on, let alone all the football players who have now been replaced. What's going to happen to them now? Won't someone please think of the professional athletes who are paid millions of dollars to play games for our entertainment? After returning to life, you just know there's going to be so many people eager to know how their favorite fantasy series Game of Thrones ended. How will their loved ones break the news that the eighth season has been a jumbled mess and one of the greatest shows of all time has totally gone off the rails? And worse yet, in 2023, the MCU George R.R. Martin probably won't have started Winds of Winter yet. It's truly a dark and tragic world they'll be coming back into. Because as we all know, winter is coming. 
We know there are tons of implications from the decimation and its reversal, and we've only scratched the surface. Let us know what your unanswered questions are in the comment section, and then click the subscribe button for more from CBR. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.